We join Matt Barrett. Matt. Hey, Reese, good evening, guys. You talk about the talent offensively and defensively with this coach. You talked about Stetson Bennett and his legs and his ability to create plays with his feet. Walk me through what Georgia needs to do with some of their skilled possession players to complement Stetson Bennett tonight. Well, they all need to step up around him to go make plays, but that's the strength of their team. You know what they're going to do right now is they're going to they're going to go out there. They got to start with the power run again. They got cannot give up on running the football. Okay, if you're right now, if you're the Georgia football team and the whole coaching staff, okay, don't put it all on Stetson Bennett's shoulders right now. Give him the opportunity to go manage the game, distribute the ball. Everyone gets on him. He's plenty talented. Up. He's a very accurate passer. Makes good decisions with the ball in his hands. As we talk about his speed and his ability to improvise and run the ball is huge. Okay, that that is a huge aspect of the game, but he needs to go rely on everybody else. Okay, Brock Bowers, get the ball to him in the perimeter, create the matchups. Okay, James Cook, creating matchups on linebackers and on safeties in the pass game, and let everybody else help him win the football game. Yeah, I think leading on your playmakers, getting out of your hands quickly, don't wait too long. I mean, don't be afraid to cut it loose in a big game like this where momentum is pivotal. Incompletions aren't the worst things in the world. What are our sacks, fumbles, turnovers, and errant plays? He's made way too many of those in the last couple times he's played in big games like this. So he can't have the catastrophic mistake. Stay within himself and lean on, like you said, Coach, a really talented supporting cast. Yeah, one of those things you'll watch, too. What kind of rhythm can Stetson and this offense get into early? Coach Fickle on the other side of the ball. I want to talk both defenses because Georgia came in here historically good. They had the triple in the SEC championship. Let's talk defense I want to start with Georgia what they need to do to rebound tonight against Alabama well, it's going to be about big plays. and obviously in the, in the SEC championship game they gave up some big plays so I think they probably don't need to be overly aggressive to start to figure out what's the difference what adjustments has, has Alabama made you know they are really good up front they can stop the run they can do a lot of things I don't know that they have to sell out you know with corner blitzes and things like that and we obviously want to change some stuff up on Bryce Young but they're just they got to get settled in let themselves play tackle really well leverage the football and don't be in such a hurry to try to create things and let the guys make some plays on their own as they continue to go Alabama on the other hand you know they can stop the run and they showed it obviously against us but I think they don't have to load the box and their ability to kind of play sound not think that they have to pressure all the time pick and choose the times when they need to but really kind of rely upon those guys up front. And then when they have an opportunity to pressure, obviously they're very sound with underneath coverage, even though it's man to man, a guy on top of everything to make sure if something does break, they can get it down to eliminate the big plays. They got to let the guys settle in, you know, find out in the first half, body blow after body blow, let Jordan Davis of the world really kind of see if he can own the line of scrimmage and create some things without trying to get too exotic and, and pressuring too much. And if you look at both these defenses, really front seven, Alabama had some growing pains early in the year. But you fast forward to the end, it's the number two rush defense in the country behind Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator. They have really come along in the front seven. It's the secondary for both teams that concerns me. I think Bama's wide receivers working against Georgia's secondary, that's advantage Alabama. Same can be said right now with Georgia's wide receivers and tight ends with a banged up Alabama secondary down their top two corners. So a lot of things that might actually happen over the top with really talented wideouts and some secondary questions that really weren't there the first Coach, time around. Throughout the year, though, I think I think Alabama's been a little bit more, not vanilla, but, but sound in some ways and haven't relied upon the pressures and let their guys kind of play. I think Georgia's a little bit more aggressive by nature, have blitzed a bit more this year, and maybe are going to be a little bit more sticking themselves out there for maybe some big plays. Certainly going to be a tone setter for the defense, Reese. Both of these schools bring defensive prowess. We'll see which one steps up early on tonight. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.